Hello, welcome back. This is Abigurus here with a more Resident Evil remake, and this, of course, is the Chris playthrough and the final episode. Of course, I could have pre recorded this in the last episode, but I think we're gonna have the final episodes. So, yes, yeah, the final part of the game for this time around. Let's press the switch, and Rebecca should arrive. I think. Someone should arrive. Yeah, Chris! there we go. Rebecca! I saw you in the inner garden. I finally caught up. Well, I'm glad you're Took okay. you quite a long time to catch up, actually. No more following. Just stay with me, kid. That's my plan, sir. A better idea would be for her to wait up here. But also, I suppose you can come with me. Uh, I actually have two uh, items refilling HP, a first aid spray and a mixture of green herbs. I also brought the magnum rounds with me as well as shotgun ammo. Even though I'm pretty sure we get shotgun ammo down here. Yeah, there we go, shotgun ammo. Have enough for one full refill, we got two first aid sprays apparently. I thought it was a combination but nope. So let's see what's inside this door then, shall we? There's a biohazard symbol, which is the title for this game in Japan, or, or the series in general. Oh, it's Wesker. Wesker. So you've come. Chris, you make me proud. But of course you are one of my men. Yep. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Since when, Wesker? <laughs> I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about. Since when have they been slipping you a paycheck? I think you're a bit confused. I've always been with Umbrella. And stars were Umbrella's... No, rather, my little piggies. Indeed. The Tyrant virus leaked, polluting this whole place, and unfortunately, I had to give up my lovely members of STARS. You killed them with your own dirty hands! You son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, dear. Just like this. Rebecca! Yep, Rebecca has got shot. You. I don't think you want to die just yet. I have something of some interest to you. Also, this cutscene in a original game is ridiculous. And of course we get the same tyrant uh, cutscene that Jill had. It is exactly the same. But it's still impressive, really. Although I suppose this is slightly different. The ultimate life form. Tyrant. <laughs> Wesker, you've become senile. What? Chris, you'll never understand. It's magnificent. Yeah, there we go. This is the scene I remember. It happens in Chris's playthrough. Where he gets penetrated by the uh, claw. Although in the original game... Come on, you test tube freak. Chris actually knocks the gun out of uh, Wesker's hand. How much... Oh, a caution. But yeah, he actually knocks Wesker's hands. Wesker's gun out of his hand. Okay, I got a claw in my back and I survived. Hmm. Ha! The sound effect played before. Did I just push the tyrant on the floor? What a pathetic way to die. He's holding something. Observation note. The discovery of the G-Virus was in fact 20 years after the administration of the primogen primogenitor virus. 
The prototype parasite, which we had delivered from a laboratory in France, was admi administered in the sample specimen. The sample specimen took in the parasite without showing any signs of adverse reaction. The lack of any reaction was an unsolved mystery, but now everything is clear to me now. The prototype parasite was incubating in the sample specimen's body for 21 years. Then, from that incubating state, the prototype suddenly mutated. Evolved, maybe a more appropriate word to describe it. This observation gave me more insight in my research. Through further modification and testing, I was able to derive a method to create a G that surpasses the performance of the T. This was the breakthrough that would change the future of the BOW's history. I can't wait to see the look on Alexia's annoying face when I finally announce my research, but unfortunately I'll have to wait a few more years to completely verify my findings. William Birkin. So yeah, like I said, uh, Wesker, I mean Chris, knocks the gun out of Wesker's hand and take it from him or something like that, if I recall. Yes, I would like to release lock. But that's not the best part. The best part is when Wesker in that version, with a different voice actor, I mind you, cries out, No, Chris, stop! It sounds so ridiculous. Oh, look at that, Rebecca's still moving. <coughs> Rebecca! Chris. It's a good thing you were wearing your bulletproof vest. <laughs> There's nothing left for us to do here. Let's get moving. Okay. Well, one would think that Wesker actually saw that. And, you know, should have shot her in the f face instead. Although, in the series in total, Wesker isn't really dead. He's dead now, of course, but he'll be back. Considering that the claw got slightly... Uh, got... He got pierced by the claw. Actually, am I supposed to do something else inside, I wonder? Let's check that first. Before heading for the elevator. But yeah, Wesker gets pierced by the claw, so technically he gets some of the virus inside him at that point. Which in the end, it will make, uh, well, considering that he's infected by the virus now, he will eventually rise from the dead due to the T-virus, and then he'll come back. Yeah, okay, so maybe I'm not supposed to activate the self-destruct mechanism myself. Hmm, I don't remember how that happens though. I guess I do know that Wesker is not the one activating it. I really like this sound effect though. Pretty sure it's directly taken from Doom though. Uh, Doom uses the same sound effects for their doors. All of their doors. Like the laboratory door. Or maybe it activates once we get up here actually. That might be it. Chris? What is it? I found a file in the lab. Apparently there's still a lot of tyrant virus here. We should blow this whole place up. Indeed. Right. The show must go on. I'll leave that up to you, Rebecca. I'm on it. I'll start the self-destruct system I found a little while ago. It's not like we're out of this yet. I'll see you on the outside. Outside. Okay, so the self-destruct mechanism is somewhere else. Let's combine these. We only really need one more space though. So, only one life ball should be fine. And when I say life ball, I need, mean first aid spray, of course. This is not Tails, after all. This is Resident Evil. Self-destruct system has been activated. All personnel must evacuate immediately. Deactivating and releasing all locks. So yeah, there we go. Of course, we'll be attacked by chimeras along the way. 
really no need for us to actually stay and fight them. Before we go to the helipad though, we need to go and save Jill. Done, we go. To the prison. Yeah, deactivating and releasing all locks. So maybe if you take the elevator, that door would be unlocked. Unlocked, I mean. The elevator that leads back to the mansion. I kind of doubt that though. I don't think we can use go that way. It would be neat though. Sorry I made you wait. I knew you'd come. Let's get out of here. Yeah, we're gonna get out and then we're gonna go back in because there's shotgun shells there which we need. Well, we don't need them per se, but it's good to have. That's where I'm going, getting at. And of course we see this room through the security camera. Which is pretty neat. The dried up Commodo. And the bed is covered in filth. I wonder how fast we're playing through this game this time around. Must be a bit faster than the yield playthrough actually. Even though we are losing time when... Uh, in between episodes and such and when I run the wrong route. Saving Jill, of course, also saves us. Say, uh, wastes some of our time, but at the same time, we do get the good ending. Let's get going. Let's get going, indeed, Jill. No need to actually worry about the camera, though. Considering that we want to counter them. So up we go. Don't remember there being any enemies here. I'm gonna pick this up and actually gonna use it. There we go. The reason why I'm doing this, by the way, is because uh, the hunter did attack us once, cut us in the back. So I'm just making sure that my health is completely full. It's a safety precaution. Uh, you might be able to save here, actually, but I don't see any point in doing so. It's much more fun having the save file right in front of the tyrant. Okay, we can talk with her. Let's open this door then. Uh, let's see, we do have a first aid box. Which we're gonna examine right away. Okay, let's so have a green herb. Let's use it right away because we don't need it per se. This is a battery, right? Nope, more shotgun shells. Hey, good, we have plenty of shotgun shells then. It is indeed our last chance, and the others are running behind me now. Or at least Jill is. Come on, Jill. Ah, oh, the fuse unit. Got oh, there it is. I didn't see it there, there actually. But oh well, we got it now. We could go back and pick up a... Uh, Life for life, I suppose. First aid spray, I mean. The self-destruct system's activated. Good work. Brad's up in the helicopter. Those things are coming. I'll take care of them. But Chris, you just get in contact with Brad somehow. Okay. <laughs> Both Jill and Rebecca runs off. But then again, no wait, Chris stayed behind. 
on, Jill, on Jill's playthrough while Barry came up with us. Okay, three minutes remain of this let's play and of course the game itself. But uh, of course we're gonna wait out some time of this. Here's the fuse box, we're gonna need that. And I'm gonna run around because I can. It's a pretty neat area, this area I mean is pretty neat. Okay. Does the timer stop if I do this? Yeah, it seems so. Okay, so maybe the timer, overall timer stops when I go into the menu like that then. That's pretty nice. Okay, we're gonna pick this up then. Guess I will take the signal rocket. Look at me move! Look at me move! It looks kinda like he's floating forward. Damn, he's floating. Oh well, it has gone one minute. Let's use it then. There we go, the signal will... There we go. It goes off right now. Let's see, is it both of them or... Chris! Yep. You okay? Yeah. It's both of them. And of course, here comes Tyrant! Which knocks out Jill. And as always, she runs out of ammo. Whoa! You almost got me there, Mrs. Iron. Okay, there you did get me. It's up to you, Rebecca. I'm knocked out. Caution yellow, I can survive another round, I think. Come on now. Okay, I pretty much need healing now. Yep, definitely, since I'm in danger. Fine by me. We just need to pick it up first. What have we got? Got the rocket launcher. Equip it. And there we go. Or you know, there we don't go. How about another? There we go. Not really sure how he managed to hit away the first one, but eh. Doesn't really matter either way, we got it. Considering that this is taking about 18, uh, 19, about 19 minutes, making this the final episode was a good idea and not the last one. Because then it would have been a really long one again. Ah, there we go, the mansion explodes just like before. It's quite funny, Chris's playthrough is canon, but Barry is actually part of the main story as well. But there we go, Resident Evil. Once again we have beaten it, but this time with Chris. So, the let's play is actually done completely now then. Considering that you the viewers wanted me to do Chris as well. And uh, that's why I did it. Then again, in the end, I would probably have done it as well, I suppose. Of course, we'll see cutscenes from both uh, playthroughs here. 
But overall, I'm actually pretty happy with this game. Well, I mean, the uh, let's play, I mean. The game is fun. It's always nice playing it, even though I get scared at moments. For example, where the dogs came out in episode 2. I knew, I know that the window will break, but uh, I was not prepared for the dogs. That's for sure. And of course when um, the hunter came out through the window in Jill's playthrough. But oh well, that was a long time ago. And of course Chris's playthrough has more bosses than Jill's playthrough. But that's because uh, Wes I mean, not Wesker, but Barry comes in and saves Jill from uh, Plant 42. Of course, I'm sure that Chris would have been able to actually uh, kill the Plant 42 before the battle first started as well. But that wouldn't be as much fun. But overall, I'm actually happy with this Let's Play. Of course, it could have always been better. But... Uh, I liked it. I don't know what you think, considering that this is up, uh, recorded before the first episode is even edited. But uh, I hope that you have enjoyed it as much as I have done. If not more. Chris, you did a fine job. Why thank you, Wesker. Six hours and sixteen minutes and fifty-seven seconds. I'm pretty happy with that. Now let's try to survive invisible enemy. The invisible enemy mode has been unlocked. That's right, you can't see the enemies. Yay! We're not gonna do that. Chris has a new costume. You've got the closet key. A new costume has been unlocked. You can change your outfit in the costume room. Yep. Indeed we can. One dangerous zombie. Be careful. Warning. There's a special zombie lurking somewhere in the mansion. That's outfitted with a large supply of grenades. If you encounter the zombie, get out of there. Yeah, it's Forrest. He will pretty much hunt you like uh, Nemesis in Resident Evil 3. And the Tyrants in Resident Evil 2. So, now we can choose Real Survival and Invisible Enemy. A Real Survival is of course um, where uh, Boxes does not carry over. Uh, boxes... Well, when we put an item into a box now, we can get it from every box. But in this play, uh, this mode, you can't access it. In if you put it in a certain box, I mean. But anyhow, that is all for me for this let's play. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed doing it or recording it. And I hope to see you in future projects. See you then everybody. See ya and take care. Oh and don't forget to say froggy. Bye.